So we're talking today with um, Diane Scott, and Diane, you are a school board candidate for the District 1 seat? That's correct. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit today um, about why you decided to run again? You're, you've already served one term, and what, what made you decide to run again? Well, I think that we have faced a lot of really difficult decisions, difficult issues over the last four years, but I think that I have done what I said that I would do when I ran last time. I, I told everybody that I would do my homework and that I would be fiscally conservative, which I had no idea how true that was going to be, but um, and that I would um, pay attention, listen to people, and be involved, and I have done that. And. We have lived within our means, and, and I have made decisions that really have been budget-driven, um, funding-driven, um, made tough decisions, and I think we need experienced leadership and, and experienced school board members right now because I think we're facing more of the same. Um, in the next couple years, uh, what do you see as the major challenges that the, the school system is going to face here? Well, I think our focus always has to be on educating children, high quality education, best interest to the kids. Um, we have to live within our means, as I said, and the budget is, is driving that. But to do that, we have to pay attention to what's happening in our classrooms. We have to continue our focus on the quality of our education and make decisions that have the least amount of impact on the instructional capacity of our, of our teachers and uh, within our schools. So I think that that's going to be a primary issue. And we're also not divorced from the Senate Bill 6 stuff that, that, that didn't pass last year, but Race to the Top is still um, on the radar screen. The government governor did a task force, and we're still paying attention to accountability and performance issues with teachers. And so I think that um, that's going to stay as an issue, um, and I have been very actively involved in linking the school district with the student group to help us develop performance standards with teachers so that we're not relying solely on the FCAP when we are doing evaluations. And I think those are important issues because I, I think the citizens and the voters expect and have a right to demand that we are teaching what we say we need to teach and, and maintaining the quality of education. And so I, I think that focus needs to remain. And of course, you mentioned that bill. Teachers were uh, very upset about that bill. Yes. And um, you know, many in the education community. And again, touching on FCAT as well. Um, how do you do that? I mean, how do you how do you work with teachers? First of all, what's your take on FCAT? Okay. Um, FCAT is what we have. We have to live with it. Um, unfortunately, we know that. Um, it's not a perfect test. It's an accountability measure, um, and it was put in place with no child left behind and at that time period because we were looking at evaluating um, how we were doing. And so as a measure that way, it's good. I'm, I'm an educator myself, and I understand that we need to look at outcomes. We need to look at whether we're doing what we say we're going to do, and that provides a means for it. What I don't agree is that, as I said, with, with performance evaluations, that it becomes the sole measure. I think that it's being wrong ways as, and as the only measure of a school's success, and, and that is not the case. And how do you work with, I mean, how do you incorporate teachers into that where they're not, you know, feeling like they're left out in the cold or they're being, you know, subjected to, I know, the, um, the, uh, the individual awards is a big point of contention. How do you work with teachers? Are you, when you say the individual awards, what the, are you referring uh, to? The Can idea. Back up? I'm not the, sure yeah, what I, I apologize. The idea of um, performance awards okay. that go to, you know, they compete for them, in other words. Okay. Um, I think that you're referring to um, bonus bonuses. I am. Merit, merit pay, kind of, kind of in a things. clumsy way. Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, I think that um, that's part of what we're looking at with the Studer Group because I think within any organization in a school district, it's the same. You could, I can walk into any school and I can ask any teacher who is their most outstanding performer and who are their lower performers, and, and people know and they can tell by what people are doing, and. I think that part of accountability is that we accurately assess our employees and those who are performing at the high end. We reward them, whether it's in terms of uh, additional compensation or other means of recognizing people, that we do that. But the pe people who are not performing as, at as high a level or are low performers, we need to put things in place that help them to move up. And, and that's part of what we're looking at with the student group, is, is trying to focus on some of our processes, but also do fair measures, and that's with teachers' input about how they do it, what they do, and to, to make it so that it is a fair process to recognize people. Okay. And then switching back again to the budget real quick, okay. um, what's going on there budget-wise? What are the major issues that are going to come up here? Well, as you know, we have the stimulus money in place, and, and this year that's about $7.5 million. 
the concern is that, um, as I mentioned before, our, our budget now is at the same level for our operating budget as it was in 2006. And so what that means is it's actually declined over the, t the time that I've, I have been in office. And um, with, with the stimulus money, that protected us um, for two years, but that money goes away in next year. And to qualify for the stimulus money, we had, to, the state of Florida had to have not cut education below a certain level. And it's actually the funding at the 2006 level. And so one of my concerns out there with the budget is that um, that floor, per se, that has been protecting us a little bit is going to go away. Um, and, that, and if the BP oil spill affects property values and the revenues in Florida drop, then our funding from the state may also be impacted below the levels that we are now. And, and we have shown right now that we can li that we are living within our means. We've done a lot of cost savings measures with the three-tier bus system, uh, or three-tier buses, and also with um, re realigning start times with our schools, reducing our, our the number of routes that we did. That saved $1.2 million. We've got another, our, we were, uh, our projections on student enrollment were under what we actually got, so we got an additional couple million dollars there. We also um, got an unexpected um, revenue from the um, tax office for property, mm -hmm. and so we got another 1.5. So our, our unreserved fund balance is actually a little healthier than what we expected, but m much of it is due to those measures that we've already taken. And so um, I know that if, if things s stay pretty much the, the way that we are in terms of funding, we'll be okay. Um, w if we have further cuts, we're going to have to look harder and deeper. Gotcha. Okay, Diane Scott, uh, candidate for District 1, school board seat. Thank you so much for talking to us thank today. You. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you.